Rogue 09, Sacramento, please respond to a trauma call. Patient was shot in the leg with heavy bleeding. Sacramento, Rogue 09, responding. We should be arriving in about seven minutes. I have the appropriate PPE gear, including gloves and a mask. I may also consider wearing glasses or a gown. It appears that the scene is safe. I don't see any apparent threats. Okay, so it seems like we're dealing with a mechanism of injury. We have only one patient. I'm going to request um, additional assistance from ALS. And then we're going to um, rule out the elucidation of the C sign because our patient appears to be sitting upright. Um, without pain in her neck. Okay, we're now going to begin our primary assessment. Hi ma'am, my name is Gil. I'm the EMT. Is it okay if I help you out today? Yes, please. Okay, what's your name? I'm Natalie. Natalie? Okay, how old are you? 18. Okay, and why did you call the ambulance today? I got shot in the leg. Okay, I got shot in the leg. So you have pain, pain there and I see a lot of bleeding as well. Um, and so, the amount of bleeding I see, it appears to be arterial bleeding, um, bright red and spurting. This is an apparent life threat um, because the patient could go into typovolemic shock. And so we're gonna treat this first. Okay, so I'm going to begin my assessment of the ABCs. Um, our patient is alert and aware because she responded to what I was saying um, without hesitation. Um, she appears to be breathing a bit rapidly, but that can be expected because she's in a stressful environment. Um, her breathing is adequate but fast. Um, what we're going to focus on is circulation. So our patient is losing a lot of blood, and so we're going to first apply pressure to the wound. And we're going to hold it here, um, and hopefully the bleeding will stop and we can bandage it. If not then we'll move to our second measurement. And so, while I'm also assessing circulation, I'm going to assess the patient's pulse. And so, okay, now can you can I see your arm real quick? I'm just going to feel your pulse. The pulse is present, um, but it is uh, quite, quite weak and very fast. I'm also going to assess the patient's um, skin. So the patient's skin is very, uh, very um, cold and clammy. Um, it's also a bit pale. Um, and I'm going to assess her calf refill as well. Just a slight pinch. And there is a slight delay into the, into the cap refill. So um, it seems that the patient may be going into shock. And so um, what I'm going to do is apply a tourniquet. Okay, Nat, so what, what I'm gonna do is um, put a tourniquet right above your wound here. It's gonna um, stop the bleed. There will, will be a tight squeeze on your leg, okay? And so I'm gonna have you help, help, help me out here, okay? And so see your hands and you're going to apply pressure to your wound here, okay? We're gonna do a quick switch off, all right? And so on a count of three, we're gonna switch, all right? So one, two, three. Okay, hold it there for a few minutes. So I have my cat tourniquet. to apply it two inches above the site of the wound. And make sure you continue to hold pressure nice and tight, Matt.
it. We're gonna twist it, make sure it's very tight as well. Lock it in place. And then right here, we're going to record the time. And so it's currently 1441. So I'm gonna write that right there. And so now you can uh, release. And so now I'm going to bandage the wound. And so I'm going to apply some combat gauze and padding to the site of the wound. And so we're just gonna go ahead and bandage you up, all right? So. We'll do a few. Wraps around the wounds. Okay. And the wound is secure. So we've taken care of our initial life threat. Um, We've stopped the bleeding and wrapped up the wound so it's nice and secure. Um, next up, I'm going to treat the other elements of shock. And so in that, I'm gonna give our patient um, oxygen. We're gonna give her oxygen through a non rebreather mask at a rate of 15 liters per minute. Um, also, I'm going to give the patient a blanket um, so that she does not lose any more heat. So we're ready to transport. Um, we're going to go to the nearest hospital, code three. Um, I calculated her GCS to be 15. Um, and so we're going to move on to the hospital and to the ambulance. Okay, so we're now in the ambulance. And so we're going to treat hypovolemic shock. We want to put a blanket over the patient. Keep you nice and warm. Okay, so we're now going to start taking our history. And so first I'll include a set of vitals. And so, okay, Natalie, so what I'm gonna do is take a few vitals from you, is that okay? Okay. And so, if I could please see your arm. Okay. I'm gonna take the patient's pulse. Patient's pulse is light and 118 beats per minute, and her respiratory rate is 20 breaths per minute. And so next we're going to take her blood pressure. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on your arm, okay? Mm -hmm.
How you feeling? Warming up a bit? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're gonna feel a slight squeeze from your arm. So just relax, okay? Mm -hmm. Put your arm. The patient's blood pressure is 112 over 76. Okay, Natalie, I just have a few questions to ask you. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, how does your leg feel? I'm in a lot of pain. Okay, it still really hurts? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you still bleeding, do you think? No. No? Okay, that's good. That's the yeah, tourniquet doing its work. Are you feeling hot or cold? or? I'm warm. Warm? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. Um, any difficulty breathing? No difficulties. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check your finger again just to see how we're doing. Her calf refill is improving. I'm also going to throw on our pulse oximeter to check out our progress. The patient is still receiving high flow oxygen, and so this will be a good way to track it. <clears throat> And Nat, do you have any allergies? No allergies. No allergies. Do you take any medicine? Uh, Flonase. Flonase, and what's that for? Just for like daily pollen, stuff like that. Okay, so I'm un unrelated. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you ever been shot before? No. Have you experienced a similar traumatic injury where you lost a lot of blood? No, never. Okay. What was the last thing you ate? Uh, pizza. And what were you doing before your injury today? I was walking to the park. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Nat. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Lisa, what I'm going to do next is my secondary assessment. And so what that means is I'm just going to be kind of searching your body, looking for other, um, other injuries, um, just so that we're clear about um, how your how your condition is doing, okay? okay. And so I'm going to take your blanket off and start our assessment. So I'm going to come up here and assess your your head, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and feel your face. Does any of this stuff hurt? Mm -mm. Uh, any, anything hurt around your scalp? No. Okay. How about on the on your neck? Nothing. Um, I'm palpating her cervical spine, looking for stuff off that feels good so far. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check out your neck as well. Her trachea seems to be in place, and I don't see any jugular vein distension. Uh, do you have any pain around your neck, Natalie? No. Okay. And so next, I'm going to assess the chest. Looks good. Do you have any pain in your chest, Nat? No. Okay. Very good. I want to listen to some lung sounds. So are you having any trouble breathing, Natalie? No, I'm doing okay. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and listen to your to your lungs just to make sure you're sounding good, okay? So go ahead and breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Lung sounds are clear, equal. Next I'm going to assess the patient's abdomen. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and palpate your, your abdomen. Do you feel any pain there? Mm -mm. 
abdomen is soft and feels no pain. All right, next I'm going to assess your hips, mm -hmm. your pelvis area like this. So I'm going to press down. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, so does that hurt? Yes. Okay, so let's take a look. Looks like we have a small contusion on the patient's right hip. Is that, is this right? Yes, so straight yes. Right okay. How about the left side? Is that okay? The left side's okay. Okay. Very good. Next we'll assess the patient's extremities. And so we have our obvious injury right here, so we'll be careful. Um, do you have any pain around this area or not? No, besides the injury. So it's okay. How about on your lower? Your lower limb? No, it's okay. Okay. How about on this leg, any injuries? No. No? No injuries. I'm looking for a DCAP BTLS. All seems to be good. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and assess your feet. Okay. So I'm going to take off your socks and shoes, okay? Okay. I'm going to find some cuticle pulses. I found both cuticle pulses. Next, I'm going to assess circulatory, sensory, and motor functions in the feet. So, Natalie, go ahead and press up on my hands with your toes. Yep. Now, press down. Can you wiggle your toes? Yep. Now, which toe am I touching? My big toe. Which toe am I touching? Pinky toe. On your right or left foot? Left foot. Okay. Very good. Cap refill slightly delayed, but adequate. So now we're going to go ahead and assess the upper extremities. Any pain on your upper arm? No. Okay. Pulse is good. How about any pain on, on this arm? Mm-mm. -hmm. good, okay. Now we're going to assess the upper extremities for sensory, circulatory, and motor functions. So we can take this off for things. Go ahead and squeeze my fingers. Okay. Can you wiggle them? Now close your eyes. What finger am I touching? A uh, pinky finger. Okay. And what finger am I touching? Ring finger. Okay. Cap refill is good. Next we're going to assess the patient's back. And so Nat, I'm gonna have you go ahead and put your arm up like this. And we're gonna rotate you on your side, okay? And so okay. we're gonna rest your injury leg here. And then rest this leg as well. We're gonna rotate you this way so that there's no pressure on your injured leg, okay? okay? So we're gonna go up on three. One, two, three. Okay. Does any part of your spine hurt? No. No? Okay, and do I need to assess the bark for any reason? No. And so the only secondary injury to report is a contusion on the patient's right hip. So because of the patient's severe condition, we're going to reassess every five minutes and take a set of vitals every five minutes.